Hello and welcome to Off the Press. Uh, this is the program where we take a look at the national dailies and make sense of it. With me to do so this morning, uh, um, Dr. Femi Idowu Adegoke, who is a social commentator. It's good to have you this morning. Good morning. Good morning. And of course, Ife in um, policy analyst. Thank you. <laughs> welcome. Thanks. It's Thank been you. a while, Ife. Did you travel again? Yes, I, I went to, <laughs> um, to uh, one of the conferences in Abuja, oh, the okay. Nigerian Digital Economy Summit. Mm, yeah. Good to have you back. Thank so you. we'll have some business uh, information here. And Dr. Femi, always good to have you also. So let's begin with the Nation newspaper. It will be displayed. And from the front page of the Nation newspaper, Pakakbak's Magu's retention by Buhari, Sagay says it's not turn by turn. Already displayed there, that story is on page eight of the Nation newspaper. Oshun is investment destination. Uh, panelists rate state high. That's good news. On page 43 of the Nation newspaper, and government using force over payroll, ASU alleges teachers must enroll on page eight also. And on the front page, telecom, a telecom firm's Sean Minister's data court directive on the front page continued on page eight. And FEC OK's 500 million uh, euro loan to create 1.2 million jobs on the front page there. Lagos reviews traffic policy to battle gridlock on page six. And senators root for e voting on page two. Buhari's order on one trillion naira project jolts senators, according to the reps there. And constituents demand answer. That's the big story on the Nation newspaper, as you can see displayed there. And ICPC reports misleading, says lawmakers on the front page there. The federal government releases minimum wage circular to labor on the front page there. And the 738 million naira fraud, EFCC arraigns Maina for using ex-EFCC chairman's name to divert pension cash. That story is on page seven. And we have a picture story there of the induction of some medical and dental students that took place yesterday at the College of Medicine in the University of Ibadan. So where do we begin this morning? Mm. Let's look at Ocean States. Okay. I know they had their economic summit not too long ago. Yes. And several of their big daughters and sons from the state came in. To I like the way the you summit. put it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think I think generally the the trend seems to be a push to sort of um, to, to for more federalism, especially with the economy, because um, a lot of the, a lot of the people realize that the commentators realize that. Uh, following or, or trying to sort of always look to the federal government mm -hmm. for hand down, for, for, for help each time outside what is, um, outside what is given to, allocated to each state mm -hmm. is, not, is going to be detrimental to us long term. So for example, if you're given a certain amount uh, for state allocation, right, mm -hmm. is expected that within that you, there's a, a level of accountability from a, from a, from a state level for those funds. And... Um, I also feel that the more autonomy and more IGR that is generated in uh, these states, mm -hmm. the better off we are in, in, the, in, in, in the sum of its parts. Okay. So, for example, you may have like a, a state like Lagos, which, is famous, which famously has a positive IGR mm -hmm. each year. I, mean, I think it's 5% of its revenue uh, is, is generated from, from the state. Within the state. Yeah, within the state. So what, what they are trying to do, I guess, is to replicate this particular uh, model that mm -hmm. Lagos State has been very successful in adopting to other models as, as far as uh, Oshun and Ogun State and even as far as um, the northern and st um, states in the east as well. Mm -hmm. You would say it's a good idea because you remember, I think it was on this program, uh, Dr. Femi, how, that we talked about not uh, too many states will be able to fund themselves if yeah, they yeah. withdraw help. Yeah. I think about 33 states yeah. also. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you know, so it's like you said, it's a good thing. It's yeah. the way it's, to. It's a good way to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I I read on the story, Osho State signing a, a mining agreement mm -hmm. with a Canadian uh, mining Fine. company, and uh, it's about about hundred million dollars water project. Okay, to that's a huge in, one. Yeah, that will be done in Osho, and then that will create jobs. It will, like she said, it will be internally generated revenue for the state. Mm -hmm. I wish so, all of this thing would set some kind of healthy competition, you know, among governors, you know. So, say for instance, if Oshun State started this and other yeah. states will borrow a leave, it won't be a possibly, bad idea. Possibly, possibly. That's the, like she said, is the right way to go for us, mm -hmm. so that we can grow from inside. Mm -hmm. grow so, from inside. yeah. So if it's more, I think you're right because if more states take it on, as you said, Amaka, as a 
as a as com healthy competition, mm -hmm. as a call to um, task, as a business, mm -hmm. and as a commercially viable business, I don't see how this can go wrong. Yeah. Right. Okay, good. Okay, so shall we take another story? Uh, which other story? Yeah, the Buhari other on one trillion project jobs and it also well, I like the story because you um, do? yeah, Why? a few days ago the president came out and issued a statement mm -hmm. which he backed by the investigation of the ICPC. Now that's indicting the uh, lawmakers that in the last ten years mm -hmm. about a trillion naira has been budgeted for constituency projects and there's nothing to show. Mm -hmm. Now at a point the Senate kept quiet. But the reps have been vocal about it, that the report is faulty, mm -hmm. it says it's not true. Leading. Now, they've come out and they've told the president to ask his ministers, the, uh, the, the ministries and the ministers in charge, because... What has happened? Yeah, because only 40% of that budget has been released. Mm. So they are claiming they've not gotten a trillion naira, as stated in the ICPC's report. But even what? the 40%, let's yeah. even talk about but even the 40%, mm -hmm. is there yeah. something to show? Yeah. They are saying what, what they're seeing on ground mm -hmm. is the work of 40%. I like it because this will make us dig deeper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We get more information. Yeah. The people will get to know that, okay, who are we supposed to hold responsible mm -hmm. for lack of performance in our constituency projects? Good. Yeah, apart from them, them just passing the buck from one, from the minister, from yeah. the minister to the Senate, Senate to the uh, House of Rep. Mm -hmm. The point still remains that there's a level, there has to be a level of accountability yeah. that is lacking at the moment. And I don't see, yes, may, maybe they may have, the, the, the facts and figures may have to be tweaked a little bit in order, in order to reflect the level of accountability. Mm -hmm. By the end of the day, right, the fact remains that somebody has to be accountable. Yeah. I like the way you put it. Somebody has to be accountable. Okay, so um, any other story from here? Shall we move to the next paper? You can some of them are in the, they are all in the other papers, so we don't leave the other papers yeah. uh, aside. So we'll go to the Punch newspaper. I believe it will be it will be put up, it will be displayed. Uh, 150 million Nigerians exposed to financial fraud. That's according to NCC on page 29. Thank you. Already displayed there. And the governors reject death penalty for hate speech. And that's on page 19. I can see the picture of uh, Fayemi there. PDP senators fault Buhari on one, one trillion Naira constituency project. ICPC misinformed president, according to reps on page 42. Um, that's what we just talked about. And then CBN, FIRS, NMPC get seven days to submit audited accounts on page 32. The story is contained there. And the PNID, uh, PNID again, federal government appeals $200 million order. Abuja trials begins, and that's on page 33. Sagai confirms Adoke's arrest in Dubai on page 18. It was yesterday or the other day he was saying, I think it was on Monday, yeah. he was saying on Tuesday, he was saying he can't make any statements until he, he confirms it. So no I, IPPIS, no pay order. Federal government and ASU clash again. That is a big story for Punch and it's contained on page two. Now, enrollment in varsities begins on Monday. We will shun it. UI, UNN, and ABU lecturers vow. It's preemptive to say union won't comply, according to the federal government. And then there's a picture of story of yet another fire yesterday uh, in uh, Suru Lere somewhere. It destroys a plaza and 15 shops in Lagos. The story is contained on pages four and five. And 40% of African countries in debt crisis, according to IMF. The story is on page 39. And EFCC arranged may now on fresh 738.6 million Naira uh, contract scam. That story is on page eight. And then we've expelled students in viral sex video. Uh, this uh, mm. is from Babcock. I think there was something yesterday that went viral. And that's on page five. Kogi Bayosa, PDP uh, National Working Committee, backs council court action, rather, against Paul's results. And that's on page 18. And um, four gang rape, Anambra woman. Oh my goodness, that's so sad. Collect a million naira from her. A mother of six throws day old baby in pit. Such stories, both of them contained on pages four and five of the Punch newspaper. And finally, APC and NEC to determine Amosu, Okorocha, and Akeredolu's fate on page 19. Where do we begin? Ife, should we start with the IMF story? 
Uh, um, yeah, sure. I, 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 I'm yet to understand in full detail how they've got got to the figure for 40%. Mm -hmm. But what I will say is I'll just give a sort of, sort of like, a, uh, like a historical background okay. to why there's a perpetual cycle of debt, okay. especially in African countries, especially from, even from an IMF's perspective. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I don't know if we are all aware of the viral video that went out with the ambassador of uh, the AU mission to the United States, mm -hmm. where she had petitioned or through, through the United Nations General Assembly, she had actually made a very, very emotional speech about the fact that uh, there was a continuation of the colonization of French states in Africa. Mm. So the Francophone countries, she, she claimed, were still under more or less under French rule. Mm. And 85% and of their uh, uh, reserves, mm -hmm. actually, from what she had said in her state, in her state were a domiciled and lodged in French, in French, uh, yeah, in French, uh, in French accounts, in France's uh, accounts. Mm. And if, the, if at any point where they want to make any kind of... Uh, uh, um, allowance or any kind of uh, request for monies to be brought back or repatriated back to uh, their, their respective countries, mm -hmm. they have to actually do a formal application to France. Isn't that some kind of holding people in financial hostage? So financial to speak? hostage, financial slavery, financial mm -hmm. colonization. Mm -hmm. However, you want to look at it, yeah. however, you construe it, is what it is. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, with that kind of, with those kind of uh, facts, it's, it's, all, it's almost in, um, in inevitable that there will always be that mm -hmm. perpetual cycle of debt, yeah. in, yes. de debt in Africa. Well, from a Nigeria's perspective as well, I know we are not necessarily the best, we don't necessarily have the best debt profile either mm -hmm. so and and i heard the other day we just we just um, were able to borrow some money i don't know who keeps lending us this money mm -hmm. who Good keeps lending question. us this money you know that we are having a lot of problems why do you keep lending money to us I, I know that ultimately that I will still be in a difficult situation by then lending, but I know that ultimately it will be for the betterment and good of mm -hmm. Nigeria if these monies are not lent to us. So until we figure out a game plan, a, a, a long-term game plan and framework for how we're actually going to get ourselves in a better position. Hmm. Good mm -hmm. one there. You want to add something to it? No, really you nothing. I just, I'm just going to mention one thing she just said, Nana. Mm -hmm. It's very key. Who keeps lending us money? I just read in one of these papers, I think it's in the nation, 500 million euros again. Mm. Yes, yes, borrowed. in the nation. Yes. So to create, but, but the, the allege is to create 1.2 million jobs. We are so borrowing to that. create jobs. And we don't seem to be seeing the So the what results. have we done with those ones? Mm. Back to the question uh, if you yeah, Exactly, asking. and that's exactly Quite pertinent. The thing, yeah. yeah, quite pertinent there. Okay, so yeah. um, there are more stories Asso. here. Yeah, then. the Asso. Asso and Federal Government. Well, they are uh, back personally, again. I don't know why Asso doesn't want to go on IPPIS. They said it's going to take out the allowances, you know, they're going to so many things to talk about the other time. You're not convinced? I'm not. Because federal government is saying it's for transparency, it's to weed out uh, ghost workers. Uh, ghost workers. Ghost they, they, for me, I think the federal government has more genuine reasons for going that route. Mm -hmm. I feel Asu personally have something to hide, not to go on this. Mm -hmm. But I hope they can sort I, I mean, out amicably anyway. Again, doctor is correct, but I will, I will go one step further to say that the same way they are, ex they are begging, they are asking for uh, transparency, mm -hmm. and there's an outcry for transparency for ASU, I think they should be Replicated across, across the, the board. board. Oh, yeah. Yeah, across the board. Even from federal government themselves, that, that themselves who are actually mm -hmm. even trying to implement this. Yeah. So federal government themselves should have a level of accountability where even at the electoral level, at, at, the, at the point where we are trying to elect them into power, that they is that level of transparency as well. Mm. So if we think that they are claiming to have under the new uh, amendments from the Electoral Act, it doesn't even go anywhere near where it should go in terms of transparency as yeah, well. Sure. So the, yes, they want to make sure that somewhat that there's enough time for us. I think there are three of the three main uh, provisions are they want to make sure that there's enough time for um, uh, primary elections in the event that mm. um, somebody passes away, yeah. one of the yeah, candidates passes away. They want to make sure that there's there's verification process, which is which is actually okay, good that, a good step. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, we need e-voting. We need mm. to have digitization mm. of our systems across the board. It's going to save us a lot of both the stress, both financially. It will make seamless voting really the system you yes know, if it, we will. Go that it way. will it yeah will. i completely agree with you but for my own concern is really the implication of all of this back and forth between asu and the federal government because if they if they insist you know it's going to come down again on the students because you yes. won't know you, you can't there's, move forward there's that famous you know? african proverb that says when two elephants are fighting yeah the grass the grass suffers i agree so, and, and that's and that's what we, this is looking like but like, we yeah. hope like you said they will come to a place of agreement 
agreement. Okay, there are so many stories here. Um, EFCC arranges Mina again, and then there's the PID, and Sagay confirms Aduke, um, then CBN, FRS, and, and NPC get seven days to submit audited accounts. Any thoughts? And governors reject death penalty for hate speech. Any thoughts on that? Well, there's one on top there. It says 150 million Nigerians exposed to financial, to financial fraud. Yeah, that's according to the NCC. Uh, how many are we? We are, no, no, million. we are already 2 million. Yeah. 200 million. So, we are already 200 million so and counting so even. So over 75% of us hmm. are exposed to fraud, financial fraud. So what is that's NCC scary. doing about it? Well, when, so this is the commission, um, communications. Uh, NCC. Yes. Commission. Yes. So, 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 I those figures just from a layman's perspective and just from a statistician's perspective, I am not quite sure about those figures because ultimately, right? If we only have the, the, the data penetration mm -hmm. of fifty percent, we're supposed to be almost a hundred, two hundred uh, million. million. Yeah. So, I mean, only fifty percent of us have, uh, uh, from from a from a digital perspective, have access to these phones, mm -hmm. right? So, the figure of one hundred and fifty million, I don't see in terms of from their, within their own purview, seems a bit skewed. Mm. So we have to just make sure that we are always, uh, there's a level of accuracy exactly. there in terms of uh, trying to understand those figures and information. Okay, uh, I think we'll go to the other uh, paper in the interest of time. And the next paper is this day. We'll go to this day newspaper. And again, CBN reports Nigeria recorded $10.89 billion forex inflow in October. And that's on the front page. It will be front page. It will be displayed. Buhari, uh, Jonathan's sacrifices for democracy will inspire future generations. And that's on page six. And FG rejects strategy moves to quash P and ID contracts and $9.6 billion award. And to file more suit against company and accomplices calls first witnesses in a witness in suspected accomplices trial. And that's on the front page, but it's con continuing on um, page eight of this day newspaper. Now, hold executive responsible for failed constituency projects, House tells Buhari, explains 50% of funds released and not 40%, according to this day newspaper. It says ICPC reports British legislative privilege. And then that's on the front page. We already talked about it. Despite public outcry, social media bills scales second reading mm -hmm. in the Senate. And that story is on page five. How do you react to that? I saw that news today. It's gotten to second uh, reading, the social media bill. Hmm. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I like the way you start. Uh, <laughs> there's that you side. Know, I have a lot of emotions. I, I, do, I can't help myself mm. around these sort of headlines just because I know the implications long term for us. We need to have a situation. I like the way you also talk about long term. It's not just the now. Exactly. It's Amaka. not just the now. Uh, precisely the point, you know. We need to make sure that ultimately there is a freedom of speech so long as it's accurate and it's responsible uh, information that is disseminated. Mm -hmm. And why, where are the other uh, technology uh, bills that have been put forward since 2016? They are, they are protector, um, protective and protectorate um, bills mm -hmm. around uh, digitization and technology that have still been held up for. And, Apparently, uh, we heard that uh, the presidency uh, rejected them. Mm. And there's a, there's, there is a commentator that I read about that said that, okay, maybe he directed me because he didn't understand it. But ultimately, this is putting us in jeopardy in terms of our data. Mm -hmm. And we have open data, big data that's being uh, uh, in, in, in a jeopardy, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, what is what we, our focus should, do, should be on those bills that have been put forward since 2016, not on trying to stifle but trying to protect us. That is the job of the um, federal government, mm -hmm. to protect us, not to, uh, to stifle us. Mm. Yeah. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, just to add, um, on the floor of the Senate yesterday, there were... There were debates, there really. There were debates, and there were some senators mm -hmm. were against it. Yeah. And they came up with the, what the Constitution says in Section 39 or somewhere, they mm -hmm. said that this would be infringing on the freedom of expression yes. and association. Yes, yes. Uh, that, that our constitution bestowed on every citizen mm -hmm. of this country. So, and the, one of the senators further went further to state that there are other laws that have taken care yeah. of what this bill is supposed to, that Nine we have the Cyber slander. Crime Act that looks after slander, libel, and all that. And there is even the criminal code Mm -hmm. That you can sue people if you, you understand. Mm. So I don't understand, like she said. Why are we going this route? Yeah. Why are we taking this route? Exactly. Yeah. There are other bills that have been kept 
whether in the wardrobe or in the cupboard, <laughs> in the cooler, nothing is happening because of self. Mm. I just feel these people are not there. That's my personal opinion now. They're just there to, for themselves. Yeah. That's He's, my opinion. Doctor is right because it's an onerous thing and there's duplication of, uh, um, of any kind of... Um, of any kind of uh, um, penalties mm -hmm. on, on, on any of the citizens that uh, fall under any of this, the purview of these uh, laws. So we need to be careful to make sure that we don't make it perjurious to ourselves and injurious long term. We just need to make sure that everybody just focuses on what is more important for us as a collective. Mm -hmm. And that is definitely being more protected of our information and, uh, and uh, your personal information, my personal information, yeah. and obviously doctors as well. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we'll go to the last, uh, the Vanguard newspaper now, in the interest of time. Uh, so, and the Vanguard newspaper again says, burning of Kogi PDP woman leader, a planned job mm -hmm. according to community. That was the big story there. Family members in shock, uh, fear of reprisal attacks to meet uh, weekend. And and then at the top there, constituency projects, which we've talked about, uh, reps and PDP senators tackle Buhari, and that's on page nine. But also, Goba, we've no issue with Jonathan, according to PDP, on page 41. Now, Amnesty International declares Shawore and Bakari uh, Jalingo prisoners of conscience, and that's on page 10. And then uh, to the right there, suspension. I won't join issue with Olanusi, that's uh, Akari Dulu speaking there on page 48. And something on business, Naira depreciates to 358.8 uh, Kobo in parallel markets on page 41. The leadership tussle, two feared dead scores injured as transport unions battle in Lagos, and that's on page six. Now, hellish traffic situation temporarily, according to uh, LASG, and that story is on page 10. And Lagos Assembly asked court to strike out Ambody's suit on page 10. And presidential team recommends Magu to Buhari for confirmation as EFCC chair. And that's on page 9. We should just take two stories here. Which, which, two, which one do you want to go for? Well, I'll talk about the um, amnesty declaration or uh, Bakar uh, prisoners, prisoners of, of conscience. conscience. Um, I hope the federal government will do what is right now by mm. uh, obeying the court orders. Because when Amnesty International goes this way, you're giving these guys a global perspective, mm -hmm. a global view. Attention. They now have the, uh, what is called the heroic mm. uh, accol accolades to themselves now. And then you see people now begin in pockets, begin to champion and make noise. Mm -hmm. And then internationally, we'll, be, we'll begin to have negative that in your country where you cannot... Uh, obey court orders, mm. where you have prisoners of conscience, and then their names will be mentioned. And then if the federal government needs to think very deeply on this, on, like he always says, on the long-term effect. Mm -hmm. Not, the court, if the court has not said they should go, it's a different Think. thing. You have given them stringent bail conditions, they have met it, and you're still holding to them. Mm -hmm. Something needs to be done. Any thoughts on that, this one, or anyone, or we'll wrap? Um, I think we, we they talked about somewhere at the bottom. Leadership, traffic. Traffic. Leadership. Traffic. As traffic, we all know how oh, we got yes. here this morning. I don't know what so happened even from yesterday and it, the other it day. It has been hellish. It's crazy. Hellish, What's hellish going traffic. On? Are there more people coming into Lagos? No. I think there's always going to be more people coming into Lagos. Lagos seems to be what everyone thinks is the Garden of Eden hmm. until they come and figure out that there's nothing here, you know? <laughs> so so but ultimately, ultimately, I think with vehicle density at 200 uh, cars or vehicles per kilometer, I don't think this problem is going to go anywhere so quickly. Hmm. So we need to find a solution as fast as possible. Uh, I know there's been issues with last month as well and Lagos State Government. That mm. also is probably um, factored into the, the issues we're having at the moment as well. And I also really we need to also look at uh, um, how we are able to... Um, uh, the, the charges that we're putting on toll gate charges as well to make sure that these, these, are, not, these, are, these are not impediments but actually help us mm -hmm. yeah, in terms of our growth. And All right, thank you so very much, Ify, you. and thank you so very much, Dr. Right. Femi. Uh, we wish we have more time, but anyways, mm -hmm. uh, we'll continue this, and this is where we'll call it a wrap today on Off the Press. Uh, we'll do this the same time tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa, and I am Amaka Okui. Have yourselves a good day.